Hey guys, let's paint that one up today. A uh, little lit match on a little clayboard panel. So small, five by seven. Uh, pretty, pretty quick and easy one. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in a few minutes. I'll show you what I'm doing and talk to you guys at the end. So the reason I'm using clayboard today is, well, because I had it in the right size. And anyway, you see how you can just sand that down it, with a piece of steel wool and makes it just like brand new. The golden high flows today and what I'm going to do is drop some little bit of white in there and then notice I just put a little burnt sienna in a drop and then I took a paintbrush, dabbed just a little bit in it and just a tiny bit mixed it right into my paint and that allows me to not have to mix up a whole lot of paint. Then I'm going to come through here and I'm going to paint ever in the entire match piece and I'm not going to worry about any overspray because I have to go black on the entire outside. And you'll notice that it looks pretty dark. Uh, against that stark white, but it's, it's not. Well, actually, clayboard's not completely white. So anyway, I've added a little bit of blue to my burnt sienna, and I took my pencil or my paintbrush, and I dipped in there, and I'm going to just add that to my white for my second layer. That is going to be a more grayish, uh, darker brown, and what I'm going to do is I took a piece of scrap paper and created an edge there, and I'm just going to spray off that edge, make a nice crisp edge on the side, and then yeah, like I said, don't worry about going out too far. Don't have to because I'm going to be putting black all over this whole thing and that will cover everything up. For the tip, I'm going to take straight napful red and I'm going to make the tip red just a little bit. Go in here, just freehand in some red on that tip. Of course, you could use a shield. Not too worried about it right here in this particular case. And I'm using my GSI Creos PS270 airbrush. Now, once I got that apple bread in there, I added just a tiny hint, did the same thing I did with this used paintbrush and just put a little bit of dab in there and added a little bit of green to that red because that is the opposite color. Darken up that red just a little bit and I will put a little bit of shadowing in on the matchstick so that it's got a little depth to it. See how I go around the bottom and create that little uh, shadow. Gonna add just a little bit more green to it and just a tiny bit of yellow actually also and uh, make a really dark brown tone and I'm gonna put that in there. That's where the uh, match is starting to burn in mid-stroke here. I'll take an X-Acto knife and pull out some little bitty tiny highlights and hot spots in there and then I will take from there I will take some uh, straight burnt sienna I believe and then I'm going to add a little bit of brown to that matchstick edge and then I'm going to run it over the top of that brown spot on the to keep the white spots from showing up too much. So I'm going to come in here and define my flame area, my flame area. I'm going to fill the entire thing in with uh, Azo Gold. Um, not exactly probably the best choice. Um, should have probably put a little bit more yellow in it. It's not a big deal. And we're, we're going to fill that in with Azo Gold. Then I'm going to take some red oxide. You see the difference in the colors, what I sprayed out right there is that darker orangish mix, which of course you can mix up one. Gonna use a shield to create a crisp little line. Took me a little bit of trial and error to find the right shield. And then I will bring in from there, create that sharp edge and then blend that out to the outside edges with the red oxide. And then I'll of course put a little bit in here on the left hand inside as well. I have added uh, shading gray to that red oxide. It gives me a nice reddish, dark tone. Not quite a black. It's getting a little bit of a purple tone to it in this case. Then I'm going to use a shield and I'm going to come in and from the inside create those darker edges on the inside of the fire. Um, remember this is a match as it's being struck so it's a little bit different than uh, you know if you were doing true fire or real, real fire, realistic fire what they call. This is you know, this is more photorealistic versus true fire or realistic fire as they call it. I am going to get some black out and then I'm going to use my uh, piece of paper again, scrap piece of paper, and use that as a shield and fill in black around. Now here what I'm doing is I'm going to fill my black in around the flame. What I'm going to do, I don't want that edge to be real crisp. I want it to be a little bit fuzzy. So what I'm doing is I put my finger underneath my shield so I'm holding it off of the paper about a quarter of an inch. So when I spray in there, I still get that shield, but I don't get that crisp, harsh line on it. Then once I've got it all filled in there, I'm going to go in here with my 
pencil eraser and I'm just gonna pull out a couple little bright spots here and there um, a little bit as you can see in the match tip and then a little bit in the wood section all right so now you can see in my cup I have a very light blue mix is in here what I have in here and then I want to go in here and define my smoke so you're gonna have to do a little bit of combination of shield work and a little bit of combination of freehand work um, notice how gently I am spraying that on there I do not want to immediately go in here and get a whole lot of paint on so I have that reduced down but most of that is from trigger control if you need to reduce it down more do so and what I will do is I will crisp up a few edges so um, I've explained this in a spoke video recently and I will leave a card up there that'll pop up on the right half right hand side of your screen so you can see uh, how I'm explaining how those shapes lay out but I'm gonna go through it roughly again uh, the reason there's a lot of fiddling around is because I don't have quite the exact shapes I want so I'm just moving my shield around the way I want it to be um, as you get further away from the flame the smoke dissipates out so it becomes a lot more blurry so you would do a lot more freehand but those edges really close at the top that's where you need that crisp line that's the on the outside definition of the smoke on the very beginning of it the outside edge needs to be crisp aside from that you can do a lot of freehand work from inside of course defining the inside edge of that smoke there and then you will watch me as I'm working you'll see how I'll ring that around and then I'll show how I'll make it roll up you'll see, you should be able to get an idea how I make that roll up and then come over itself And once I get that to roll up over itself the way I want, I'll come in here and I'll add a few random strokes in between. But remember, I'm always paying attention to the direction that the smoke is flowing and that it's shifting and changing directions, and that's from the air currents. Um, so just need to get a general idea of the way it's flowing. And then, of course, I'm freehanding in a couple of extra random shapes inside the smoke over there on the right-hand side as well and then little smoke curls that come out get it then the i'm going to just take it. my racer and i'm going to try to pull deal. some over sprag out over my uh, matchstick in there and pull that back out. back out all right guys hope you got something out of the tutorial today don't run off just yet um if you are confused at all about how i'm doing that smoke i have a smoke video there's a card popped up on your right hand side of your screen so make sure you check that out and that gives a little bit more technical and more information of what I went through in this particular video. Anyway guys, and I will have links down in the description below for the materials and stuff that I use today. Um, you know, remember, like, comment, share, and hey, hit that subscribe button, notification bell if you hadn't been here before. That's going to be it. It's going to be a wrap for today. I appreciate you guys coming by here. We will talk to you next time.